In the realm of mobile gaming, there's no series quite as iconic as Angry Birds. After being released in late 2009, Nine? the series would- 2009? Can you imagine that? Angry Birds is more than 10 years old at this point. It feels like yesterday I saw something like this happen. How time flies. How time truly flies. Honestly? Man. Understanding that Angry Birds is more than 10 years old at this moment makes me feel kind of old. For some people, this was the game they played in their childhood. Can you imagine that? Insanity. Would go on to have 3 billion total downloads, wow. two movies, several spin offs, and a lot of merchandise. Wow. The level of success this game about birds and pigs led to is so immaculate that I can't even put it into words. But I'll try to show it as a visual. The last time I did a What Killed video, it was with my favorite tower defense series, Plants vs. Zombies. Eh. Here's the Google- Let's be real. No one cares about Plants vs. Zombies. They tried to resurrect that franchise, if I'm not mistaken, but no one liked it. Well, because EA was responsible for it. Google Trends Graph for PVZ. And here's Angry Birds. Oh, wow. Look at that. Angry Birds is... well... Uh, roughly three times more popular than Plants vs. Zombies. Admittedly, Plants vs. Zombies was also a big thing, but they never actually uh, took off as much as Angry Birds. Look at them, they actually even were in the lead in popularity for a time, huh? Well, for a very, very small sliver. Angry Birds, though, looks like they had a pretty decent run for roughly like five years. Their popularity peak at what? 2011? 12 or something like that and then it just well pretty rapidly declined uh what would be the cutoff point maybe this that could potentially be 2014 so they had some pretty good years three pretty phenomenal years it seems like very interesting also, just for fun, let's put me here too. But unlike the story of Plants vs. Zombies, where the series suffered from an overall decline caused by stale releases and simply how popular it was before, the Angry Birds series was largely killed with one bad decision. That being, the game's being pulled directly from the App Store. At least, oh. that's what most people believe. But the series actually had a pretty significant decline before that. In this video, I'm gonna go through the history and see the series of events that led to the downfall of one of mobile games gaming's biggest icons. In two it's actually always very interesting when you see something like Angry Birds, because it truly was a juggernaut for its time. It truly was something that everyone knew about, everyone heard about, and yeah, maybe even people had like a, some kind of Angry Bird toy or pillow. I remember I had one acquaintance that did have an Angry Bird pillow. We were in Friends after I found that out, but hey, at least I knew someone, and I think my cousin's cousin bought a Angry Birds keychain for their kid. Maybe I'm wrong about that. It was a bird of some kind, so maybe it counts. His biggest icons. In 2003, three Finnish university students, I'm not pronouncing these, entered a mobile game development competition at an event called the Assembly Demo Party. They basically partook in an early- Oh, you can already tell that that's mega sweat nerdy shit. Oh my god, what a start. Early 2000s version of a game jam. And they made this game called King of the Cabbage World. They ended up winning the whole event. And this led to them starting a gaming company called Relude. The game itself ended up getting sold to a company called Sumia and being renamed to Mole War. Two years passed oh. and Relude finally got its first round of investment and the company was renamed to Rovio Mobile. They worked really hard- <laughs> Rovio Mobile. Didn't they- didn't he say they were f uh, Finnish, not French or something like that? Wow. ...to release a lot of games, but nothing quite worked out. That is, until 2009, when in December of that year they'd released their magnum opus, the very first Angry Birds game. It may have taken six years and 52 games, but they- I'm just gonna put it out. I think Angry Birds' success is largely because of the name. Angry Birds. It's such an easy, such an easy to understand name. And it's act it actually has some kind of allure to it because you're like, it's birds and they're angry. But why are they angry? Why are they angry at the pigs? Why do they want pig genocide so badly? What is their deal? What is their problem? 
Why are they sacrificing their young to exterminate the pig population? What's happening here? They finally did it. Angry Birds was the most popular game of its time. And like its contemporaries, it follows a simple gameplay loop with a lot of replayability. Basically, you have some birds, and you use them to break buildings to kill pigs. The uniqueness in the levels comes from the different abilities each bird possesses. Just as a quick refresher, Red is boring and has no special ability. Chuck okay. is faster than Red, but slightly weaker. The blues are much weaker. Wait, what's the point of being a little bit faster? Weaker, but can split into three and completely destroy more spread out damage on weaker structures. Bomb explodes. Matilda lays an egg, and the egg explodes. Terence is fat, and Hal is a boomerang that does boomerang things. Together they form the backbone that the level design could build off of as each bird works best against certain materials. But the gameplay loop wasn't exactly their original idea. The gameplay concept for Angry Birds was taken from a Flash game made that same year by the name of Crush the Castle. They oh. share the same basic mechanics where you have to hurl projectiles at an enemy base to kill enemies. But, but it looked a lot more better. Plus it was child friendly. Being child, Angry Birds understood that they need to be child friendly before child friendly became a thing because you know 2010 i would say personally was roughly about the time when everyone slowly started to using on a mass scale i would say computers plan shits and things like that as parental supervision for children because people are fucking lazy and that's how a lot of kids start playing Angry Birds, because it was the first thing they could download. Being at the top of the charts for a download is pretty big. But the slingshot works differently than the trebuchet, and in Angry Birds you have several different birds, each with unique abilities. Not to mention the more distinct variety in enemies and base materials. All things considered- <laughs> Distinct variety of enemies, I'm pretty sure no one actually cares about that too much, let's be real. I wouldn't call Angry Birds a ripoff, but it was at least heavily inspired. With Rovio finally securing a hit, they decided to take the obvious route and milk the Angry Birds series for all its worth. Smart. By 2011, they had already planned out the movie. And from 2010 to 2013, eight different Angry Birds games were released. In Star Wars Angry Birds? Well, I guess that's smart. That's what Fortnite is doing. If anything becomes popular, congratulations. It's a Fortnite mod now games were released, including some of the most iconic games in the series, like Seasons, Rio, Space, Star Wars, and Bad Piggies, a game that focused on the titular antagonists and has you creating these egg-stealing contraptions. And they also decided to become a video game publisher rather than making the games themselves. But the biggest thing they did when it came to profits was merchandise. When you make a game that revolves around little cartoon birds attacking little cartoon pigs, it's only a matter of time until people want to buy- Oh yeah. By the way, for those of who uh, of you who do not know, kids are the absolute goldmine that absolutely every single company wants to target at least for a bit. Because parents just don't say no to kids. Kids are going to constantly nag at them if they want something. So if you can get a kid to want something, sooner or later, that kid's getting it. Because most kids are spoiled. And most things that kids want are actually quite affordable for most parents. And that's a big money pull. This was a whole situation, remember, at YouTube a while back? Advertisers targeted kids, and it was the most lucrative uh, AdSense pool to be in. Because if your uh, videos got ads for children, you were bringing in the dough. You know, ads for gambling, psh, child's play money. Ads for beauty, psh, child's play money. Ads for children, congratulations, king, here's your golden throne. You are literally making millions. And that was a big deal. And considering this merchandise was exactly perfect for children, oh, they probably made, made huge. I said characters. In 2013, Rovio made $213 million, and roughly half of that income came from merchandise sales and licensing. Liter uh, also, fun fact, you know, for example, like, they show Star Wars there or something like that? Uh, the thing is, Star Wars, yeah, it, it does make a lot of money, 
from the cinema releases, well, not actually a lot of money for them. They would probably say that they don't think that's a lot, but they do make a decent chunk of money for it from it. But the reality, they milk it when it comes to the toys because every sweaty nerd wants the Star Wars toys, and every kid who watches the movie wants the Star Wars toys. Oh yes, so merchandising is a gold mine, also. Sales and licensing. Literally everyone owned at least one plushie. Even I still have a few lying around. The next year was where things started to stagnate a bit. This year gave rise to a lot of new up and coming mobile games. And the Angry Birds series is now five years old. But Rovio still had some tricks. When does Flappy Bird come into this equation and absolutely destroy Angry Birds? their sleeve to avoid falling out of relevance. They decided to take more risks with the series and started to branch out. In late 2013, they released Angry Birds Go, a racing game that's completely different from the usual Angry Birds formula. Yeah. And while that game didn't do quite as well as expected, they decided to try to completely flip the script of the series with Angry Birds Epic. This is where I'd say the series peaked. Maybe not from a cultural relevance perspective, but just with the scope and quality of the game. While the older games focused on the simple arcadey nature of the gameplay loop, Angry Birds Epic is a turn-based RPG that uses the Angry Birds characters to create a fun atmosphere. Developed by Chimera Entertainment and published by Rovi- Chimera, by the way, I guess. Yo, this game's a fun addition to the series that also uses the art style from Angry Birds Tombs, a TV series- Well, as l I, I actually have no idea what this game is supposed to be. Uh, but, you know, as long as it looks childish, as long as it's simple, as long as it's interactive, technically your young audience can be retained easily, so it's not bad. ...that ran on Teletoon from 2013 to 2016. The different weapons, characters, and items add a fun layer of strategy. Not to mention the music in this game genuinely sounds great. Unfortunately though, Angry Birds Epic wasn't as big of a success as Rovio had hoped for, and 110 people were laid off as a result of low profits from their recent endeavors. Those well, yeah, you kind of expect that, but taking risks and branching out if your old IP is stagnating is kind of smart and I do honestly agree with it. Admittedly, yeah, obviously they're not going to get so so much uh, people playing the game and downloading in such huge hype by making this and this compared to the original Angry Birds because that was a one, one, in, a one in a thousand shot one uh, in the dark you know that that was complete luck that it just blew up it was in the right time everything was good for it there was no real competition in that sense it was perfect pitch perfect obviously for the time it was created for and this and obviously it has the appeal, the style, so you know, people who like Angry Birds are maybe gonna download it, but you can't expect it uh, for it to be the next big thing. Those two games still got a ton of downloads, but I guess they just weren't too profitable. By the end of the year, Rovio profits were down 73%, Damn. which caused them to lay off another 260 employees the next year. Then they chose to get- How many fucking employees do they have? A billion? A million? Because it's um, laying 130 employees off, okay, laying 260 later off and still being okay with that, damn, that's a lot of useless employees in that case. That's called bloat, my dude. Get back to basics. With Angry Birds 2. Ignoring the fact that this isn't the second Angry Birds game, Angry Birds 2 was a solid continuation of the original. There are new level gimmicks and the art style was modernized, all the while keeping the same general gameplay as the first. But that year they'd also go more far out than ever. After seeing those like bubble shooting games on Facebook, Rovio realized that they were incredibly profitable. So they made a spin-off called Angry Birds Pop. This game has you shooting <laughs> colored balls to remove other colored balls. On its own, it's just a mediocre puzzle shooter with an Angry Birds skin. But what's more Can you even honestly call this a puzzle shooter? Can you honestly just call that even a puzzle shooter? interesting to see is that this is the direction where Rovio will soon be heading. In 2016, the Angry Birds movie was released. Critically, it wasn't insanely well received, as it seems like just another generic video game movie, but it- Well, I mean, let's be real about this. I didn't watch the movie, but l let's think about the Angry Birds movie, how it's supposed to go. A bunch of adolescent birds throwing themselves to their deaths to kill a bunch of seemingly innocent pigs 
Well, that's obviously not kind of going to slide as a movie premises. For children, at least. So, how do they make it fun? I don't honestly even know. Did well financially, making 352 million at the box office. Those are some pretty big numbers, so it was only a matter of time until a second movie would be made. That same year, they released two more games. Some pinball like game, Angry Birds Evolution, which used the designs from the movie. And okay, I already can tell you something that they did probably really stupidly. Uh, we can. We, I, I assume that the first movie was okay at the bare minimum. Considering they released two movies. If the first movie is bad and you're struggling, you're not releasing a second movie. It's just not happening, okay? Basic logic, I feel like, that everyone should understand that. But the fact that the first movie was an actual success, it made money and people liked it, and they did not make a game that capitalizes off of it, that's a mistake. Doing a second part, yes, yes, obviously, that's good, but... Not making a spin-off, not making a game that actually, you know, some kind of, somehow ties into the movie so people want to uh, play the game or, you know, because of the game, watch the movie. That seems off. That that, that seems not, not big smart, you know? Financially, making 352 million at the box office. Those are some pretty big numbers. So it was only a matter of time until a second movie would be made. That same year, they released two more games. Some pinball-like game, Angry Birds Evolution, which used the designs from the movie, and Angry Birds... Bl oh, okay, they... they... No, the designs from the movie is not the same. They also should have marketed it as a part game from the movie, not just designs. But at least they use designs, so, you know, I take it back. They, they didn't fail completely there. Last, it's a match three game. Yup, they saw Candy Crush and just went, we can do that, and they did in fact do that. We got a few more uninspired <laughs> games in 2019, but we also got the second Angry Birds movie. I'd say it was a pointless cash grab that only reinforced my belief that Rovia is now solely- Yeah, obviously it was a cash grab. Almost every second part of a movie is a cash grab most of the time. <laughs> it's- that, that's just how it works. ...in it for the money, but this movie was actually surprisingly decent, and it feels a lot more inspired than the first film, being a solid take on the heist movie format. Now we finally have their most recent blunder. Damn. Around mid-2019, Rovio had internally decided to stop updating their older Angry Birds titles. All of their older games were then removed without warning. After it finally started gaining attention the next year, they released a statement saying they just stopped updating the older Angry Birds games due to them wanting to focus on newer games rather than just performing maintenance on older titles. This Do you need to perform maintenance on games if they're on the App Store? If you stop maintaining them, do they just get automatically removed? What the hell? Sounds fair enough, but that means that the older Angry Birds games would no longer be compatible on the newest devices. Oh, While I can true. definitely sympathize with Rovio, as it can be annoying to be solely known for something you've done so long ago, allowing the games to become unavailable isn't something they should have even considered. From an outsider's perspective, it just appears that Rovio was purposely removing the older games to force people to play their newer, arguably worse game. And limit That is stupid. If that was their decision making, that that is pretty stupid. Obviously, it doesn't actually cause that much to maintain those games. It's 2020. It's about time you try to st uh, milk the ki child uh, children playing that game with microtransactions, skins, uh, power boosts, and things like. Maybe they had all of that. I, I honestly don't. I don't play. <laughs> Who has played Angry Birds in like 2020? I mean, absolutely no one. Maybe they actually do ha uh, have pay to win microtransactions in Angry Birds. But the fact that the fact that they didn't update them seems just absolutely insane. For if you have a game like Angry Birds that has uh, had cult popularity, there's 100% people left in the game that are playing it because they're literally addicted to it that you can milk for money and the update costs actually don't matter that much you know it just seems strange that you would just let your old ips just kind of die off for no reason 
Limiting someone's options isn't something to be taken lightly. Halfway through 2021, Rovio put out another, more revised statement, providing some reasons why the games were taken out of circulation. Saying okay. they wanted to focus on making newer and better games rather than updating games on an outdated engine. They ended it off by saying they'll work on bringing some of the classic Angry Birds games back. And on the last day of- Oh, remakes, remasters, reimaginings, oh, classic. March 2022, they re-released Angry Birds Classic. This is a remake of the original game, and while it's a faithful remake, we're still missing many of the older Angry Birds sequels, like that is is it actually doing good? Space, Season, Star Wars, or Epic. The only one of these games to get relisted was Bad Piggies, which is pretty cool, but like Give us the other ones. Currently, Rovia's in some pretty hot waters. Not only with the fan base, but also with the law? Yeah, oh, no. so as it turns out, they were collecting the data of underage children. Whoopsie. Ah, uh, a classic game and move. So what killed Angry Birds? By the way, that data is absolute. They probably did it in the early years, because that data was probably for fucking gold. Again, there's a reason, there's a reason the laws were signed in that you can't specifically target advertisements for children in a lot of cases, because those are the absolutely money pits. Birds. Besides the deletion of their older games, I think the biggest aspect of the decline was the shift from making original games to instead focus on their newer and honestly less inspired games. I'm not saying the series was super original before, but the creativity really took a hit after the release of Angry Birds Epic, and Rovio weren't even the ones that made that game. There's actually a lot of similarities I found between the story of Rovio and Popcap, the company behind Plants vs. Zombies, a game that released that same year. They both got massively popular off of one game, and had to do whatever they could to keep it afloat. I think the biggest difference between the two is that PopCap sold out to EA before the beginning of the decline, while Rovio tried to do everything on their own. And because of this, they ended up biting off more than they could chew, having to close several divisions and have a lot of layoff due to the underperforming of their recent titles. Before the buyout, the scope of PopCap's games hadn't ever increased. But with Rovio, after the first wave of success, they immediately began to work on massive projects, like several grander spin-offs, and the two feature films. Uh, okay, so, actually, let's, let's listen to all of his points. I believe the biggest issue was that, like anything that gets super popular, Angry Birds was always just a fad. And instead of branching out into other things early on, Rovio just kept making Angry Birds games. They put all their eggs in one nest. And after a while, the pigs were there to steal them. Okay. Got it. Right. I completely disagree 100% with all the conclusions, it seems like. Uh, the company did what, you know, any reasonable per, uh, company would do. They saw that their thing is absolutely blowing shit out of the water, as we see by the graphs compared to Plants vs. Zombies, for example. Everyone wanted a plushie. So, they capitalize on that. You don't need to start a new franchise while your old, currently existing franchise it is at its peak. You know, there's not a lot of good things you can learn in a university, but in economics, one of the things... Well, maybe it wasn't economics, maybe it was business management or something like that. There's there's this neat little gra uh, box that they do. It's like a box, and then you split it into four, uh, into four sections. And then you need to figure out is the bit in oh, in which section is the business. You know, is it the rising star? Is it an old dog? Is it you know some kind of period? And the people at Angry Birds did everything right. They saw that people love Angry Birds, and they capitalized on that. They made movies, they made other spin-off games, and they made other things. It's like the only honestly thing that they could do is like buy other IPs and hope that they kind of succeed by other companies and branch out like that. But while you're slaying it, why? There's no honest point in doing it unless you have like a serious plan for it. And you know, after their glory days ended, which was literally like four to five years, I would say, just ju uh, judging from the Google Trends graph, you know, uh. Good luck after that. It's not like you have the money to ac acquire new companies and do anything like that. And the thing he said about... Where is it? Oh, copying other games. 
people copy other uh, other fads constantly. People copied Candy Crush, and those companies that copied Candy Crush good enough made literal millions upon millions for months and years. Candy Crush is making literal millions upon millions upon millions every single month. Any time a fad appears and someone copies it good enough and puts in enough uh, enough ways to milk their view, u- user base, they make they make their investment back a hundredfold usually. That's the reality of it. I can't honestly say that they did anything wrong with the idea of just, you know, sp- making spin-offs, making merchandise and so on. It's the biggest truth that he says here is probably the fact that Angry Birds was more or less a fad, but I don't even know if I can agree to that because if it was so popular for roughly like 4 to 5 years was peak popularity, then, you know, was it actually a fad or something like that? I don't know. Kind of, kind of hard to tell. Can't find really where, where the trend line here is. But, you know, it's... I think they did everything right. At least from those things that he is mentioning. I don't think anything was wrong there. It was probably something else. None, a mismanaged money. People could not figure out what they wanted to do. Uh, they hired the wrong people to do the wrong things. But admittedly, something like that is really hard to figure out just from, you know, from uh, from the outside. You can never really truly know. You know, anyway, that was pretty interesting. Angry Birds, who would have thought? Anyway, thanks for watching, subscribe, and thought already have a nice day, and bye-bye.